the next one is incident management policy so document control page uh, we have document id and security classification uh, related documents uh, then we have confidentiality statement and these are the contents so for incident response plan uh, we'll see on incident response operations uh, what is the cycle of incident response plan so we have a uh, detection and response uh, their classification uh, incident monitoring and tracking uh, let's start with objective so uh, the objective depends on why we are creating this policy so incident uh, when we get any incident uh, how quickly and how effectively uh, company team will handle that incident so that's why we need to create this incident response policy roles and responsibilities so FIFO will uh, be accountable FIFO will uh, oversee the implementation and enforcement of this policy uh, IT security team they will uh, be uh, responsible for ensuring incident, man uh, incident management requirements and uh, enforcing these requirements and uh, project managers or BU heads they ensure that the employees under their supervision follow this policy and these are for employees or contractors so the scope of this policy it applies to all employees management and also external vendors Now this is for incident response operations and at that we have a statement here a formal documented incident response plan uh, should be there for incident handling uh, we have this objective standard and guidelines and, and under incident response plan So it have all the details of uh, what uh, we have here develop an incident response plan and it should contain all these details like roadmap for implementing incident response capability uh, mission uh, define uh, report uh, reportable incidents what tools we are using how we can track the incidents so all details are here the standard so uh, be prepared to respond immediately to any information security incidents so this depends on organization as well as uh, regulatory requirements so we need to respond it within 72 hours or 48 hours and this also depends on what uh, what are the project contract we are signing with the customers and what are the SLAs so create incident response plan and we need a dedicated team for this uh, which should be 24 by 7 available So for incident, uh, for for uh, standard, you can see here, we have some other details. Uh, these are the guidelines. Now risk assessment, we have discussed this uh, separately under this document. So once you have an incident, uh, before deploying all the incident to uh, UAT or production, you need to carry a risk assessment on what could be the impact. Uh, so this risk assessment may be done on at least once a year, or if there is any significant changes to networks or systems or applications. Incident detection and response. So incident there might be uh, incident uh, through number of methods uh, it may be from customer information like customer sends you an email or uh, from any kind of uh, communication media that we are receiving this uh, issue or this vulnerability so it may be from customer or any uh, tool may be detecting it from you like we have sim tools uh, so it may be coming from security operations center team so this team is available 24 by 7 to monitor all the logs uh, and alerts they are getting under the tool. So uh, we may get some incidents from this team. We may get it from customers. So we may get on alerts 
uh, or fail log uh, login detection. So we have some kind of alerts here. So we may get some incident from the alerts, automatic alerts. For detection and response, so this is the uh, policy here. So this is important. So once we had a confirmation uh, of the breach, then T will inform customer within 72 hours. And this depend on uh, uh, regulatory and company requirements. The relevant mitigation and fixes is decided upon the complexity of the incident and what are the processes in place. Incident classification. So we can classify uh, as data breach, unauthorized access, if it is a malware, if it's inside a threat. And that's an incident response team. So we should have an IT team who takes care of all network and hardware infrastructure. So they manage the firewall, network, all the servers, database there. Uh, we have uh, included database team and their IT team. We have application support. Uh, so anyone from uh, project support team who knows the application. Uh, we have a QRT, which is quick response team for any emergency response uh, team working outside working hours. So these are the responders. We have legal team, architect team, and security team. And this stream structure, it depends on organization, how they are creating it. But they should keep in mind that the incident, this activity should be 24 by 7. Uh, incident reporting. So once you get an incident, once you start analyzing the incident, you, sh you should start documenting it. And incident monitoring and tracking. So usually company uses a uh, central uh, same tools like uh, Curadar or Splunk. This is for SOC activities. So you may get incidents from there. And once you have incidents coming from any of these sources, you can track and monitor this incident, any other softwares like we can use Jira or we can use any other incident uh, monitoring and tracking tools. Uh, once you receive the incident, you need to carry an RCA or root cause, a root cause analysis and what are the lessons learned from that incident. Now, apart from these, uh, other items like employee training and awareness, compliance and monitoring, these are all uh, generic to all the policies. Exclusion matrix and policy exception. If someone needs any exception from this policy, then they should uh, follow this document. Policy reviews and updates, and that's a contribution. So we have one more thing on the risk, on the incident response, we have incident register. So this incident register, it's kind of a sample template. You can follow this, uh, like we get uh, example uh, 37 uh, incidents under this month. So we need to track how many incidents we are getting and what this is the criticality of each and every incident and how we are managing that incident. So all the details would be under incident register. So you may follow this document or you may also have your own tools uh, to track it for you. So if you have a centralized tool, you can use that tool as an incident register or you can follow this template. So that's it on to incident management policy. Thank you.